Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this short game to video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be experimenting with an i7 4770K and finding out just how well it holds up against modern day processors, like for example, the 1700X. And we're going to be utilizing a GTX 1080 here as a point of comparison. So why is it that we're testing with a 4770K and why does it look so well terrible in terms of cable management. Well, allow me to tell you the story. So that is actually a personal system that I built way back in the day. Um, I bought the 4770K along with the Asus motherboard and so on at the exact time that the processor launched. And essentially, uh, a couple of months ago, several months ago, the power supply in that system died. And so just because I was in a rush, we're actually doing RGT deadlines, plus as well, I've got client work. I just did not have time to like take out the power supply, reroute all the cables and so on and so on. So what I just did is just plonk any old uh, power supply that I had lying around. It's a fairly decent one and basically plonked it in and left it literally hanging out the side of the PC. I know you're judging me already, but it was like I needed a system working that, that moment and I just did not have time quite honestly, to uh, tear out the old power supply, undo all the cable management and so on. So what I've done the last couple of days, yesterday essentially, is I actually took out the cable management, uh, put this in just so it's safe, uh, and I'm just gonna leave this system like that for now. Uh, there's a reason behind that. When I get back from the States, uh, some of you may know I'm traveling to Seattle, I'm gonna be there a month, uh, we're going to be build, um, well, I'm going to be building myself a different system. I've actually got a Ryzen 7 already that I bought a while ago, and that's with, uh, you know, the motherboard, uh, you know, new graphics card, and so on and so on. But, uh, this system I want to keep because it's got personal files on it, and, uh, you know, it's kind of sentimental. It's been with me for so long, and it still performs rather admirably. So, you know, I just want to keep it as a secondary capture system and so on. So it's something that I'm going to be messing around with in the future. But for now, uh, before I rip out all the cables and do cable management on it, I decided to do something a bit fun. So when the power supply on this thing uh, fell over, it actually nuked all of my overclocking settings, as you can imagine. And uh, so I had to load factory default. For So for some time, I just left the system at factory default because most of my heavy editing I haven't really been doing on that on that system so I was like you know what it doesn't really matter I'm just using it for client work which is not that big of a deal it's just like a little bit of web design here and there it's a little bit of photoshop that's fine with the system but I want to start going overclocking again and kind of clearing out all out and you know optimizing the system so i decided to do this video just for point of comparison because i realize a lot of you might be in a similar situation you might have a 4770k and wondering just how that system is going to compare against a modern day ryzen or perhaps an intel cpu so of course we have actually done reviews of the b360 and the 8700 we've done a 2700x review and so we have those figures uh, with various graphics cards so I just wanted to use this GTX 1080. And so I'm gonna rip out the RX 480 that's been in there. And that's another thing, that's actually a 4K screen back there. But I haven't really been doing an awful lot of gaming on PC at the moment. I've actually been using the Xbox One X because, well, this card, the 1080, I've been using an awful lot in benchmarking rigs. But because we're, uh, as I mentioned, getting an, uh, an RTX 2080 uh, series GPU, it just makes more sense for me to plonk this in this rig for now and, you know, have a bit of fun with it. So with that said, yeah, we're going to put this in here and install drivers and, you know, do stuff. All right, let's begin. All right, so obviously, first thing to do, unplug the power. This is the PCIe one. This case is actually rather cramped. It's a holdover from a different PC that I had. Um, there's actually some components, for your FYI, that uh, I actually still have in here from my i5-2500K that I had from back in the day. And there we go. The RX 480 I'm going to be keeping as a mid-range test uh, GPU. There's actually some cool things that I want to be trying with this over the next few days. Hopefully I can get it all done before I mosey on to Seattle. And there we go. 
the relevant power cable as well, which is uh, that one. Okay. So, uh, we're going to do a few manual runs in just a moment of Doom and Rise of the Tomb Raider, but before we do, let's go into some graphs, because I think that they're rather interesting. And it does illustrate that even at 1080p, typically you will actually find excellent performance with the CPU and you can still see not that much difference between, let's say, a 4770K in this instance when it's overclocked versus a modern day i7 CPU. And that to me is really impressive. Okay, a little bit of gameplay of Rise of the Tomb Raider at the high settings. Um, at 1080p, this is of course not overclocked. So we're running uh, with the Asus Core Enhancement enabled, yes, but the memory is running at just 1600 megahertz, which is pretty slow for a um, 4770K. And uh, yeah, so you can see that there is definitely frame rate dips as we're going into areas. I mean, look at that low sixes. Yeah, 60, 58, there you go. And that part is really, really quite strenuous because of the sheer amount of, uh, uh, the sheer amount of uh, foliage and other things to draw. The CPU just is really having an issue uh, keeping up, uh, sending data to the GPU. So now we're back into Rise of the Tomb Raider and we are running at uh, 1080p, high settings as last time. We have all of the cores overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz with the memory running at 2200 megahertz. Now I can get this processor a little bit higher in terms of raw clock speed, but I have decided to settle at 4.4 gigahertz because my particular CPU requires an awful lot of tweaking and voltage bumps to get it above 4.4. I certainly can do that. But, you know, it's just a quick and dirty overclock to give you an indication that yes, a 4770K or similar CPU can certainly hold its own in modern day gaming. So we're going to be doing a quick manual run. This is not normally the manual run that I do uh, for benchmarking, but it serves its purpose. And I went this route last time and you can immediately see that the frame rate is holding up much better than previously. I mean, look at that, 70s. 80s and yes it's you know the high settings and all but still this is really impressive and honestly this is more than enough for most gamers i mean if you're on a budget and you're like well do i buy a graphics card or do i upgrade my pc's like processor and stuff well i think the option is pretty obvious And a little Doom. This is using the Vulcan Appy. Uh, and well, we'll see how well it does. It's holding up fairly well so far, but we can see that there are definitely frame rate dips. Uh, this is, for your FYI, normally the route that I go uh, when I'm doing manual runs. I'm just going to be, I think, you know what, I'm going to switch to the rocket launcher. I can already tell though that, yeah, it's considerably slower. There's certain angles where we go into the room and explosions definitely hit the frame rate hard. So yeah, it's not doing bad. It would certainly max out a 
1440p monitor with this processor, but we've got a long way to go if we want to actually keep this at 200 uh, FPS, which is the frame rate limit for uh, Doom. So I'll play for just a few more seconds to see how it does in the next area because we've got some uh, a horde of baddies that we need to take out. Yep, 150. Seems like 150, 140 is about the low. Yeah, 130, there we go, 128. Curious to see what will happen when we use the chainsaw, actually. This might actually cause a little bit of problems because... Mm, no, it's, yeah. 130. So it seems like 130 is pretty much the lowest you're going to see this. Hmm. Now this one's going to be fun because I'm playing with a gamepad. I've never played uh, Doom with a gamepad before. And more to the point, I suck at gamepads with FPS. So I don't even know what the buttons are. So this is going to be uh, Paul failing a lot, I think. I'm just going to make some assumptions. All right, let's... Okay, so that's look, throw a grenade. That does not help. And this switches weapons, apparently. Okay, well, I'm sure we can do fine. We're not trying to play the game properly. We're just trying to actually figure out, you know, the frame rate. So it's all okay. Let's go with Rocket Launcher. There we go. Isn't that fun? Let me just murder you. Thank you. Either way, uh, the point is not the gameplay the point is it's holding at almost 200 fps and uh, i'm pretty happy with that so i think that's a pretty conclusive test so what have we learned well it's fairly obvious that yes is the answer the 4770k can still hold up rather nicely against modern processors so if you are on a budget and you're questioning well should i buy a GTX 1080 or an RTX 2070 or something like that, then yes, I would highly advise you to buy one of those cards rather than a CPU upgrade. Because at the end of the day, if you were to purchase, let's say, an 8700K or a 9700K or whatever, uh, a Ryzen CPU, you're still not going to have enough oomph anyway on your graphics card, most likely. So it's better to be able to turn up the eye candy a little bit more because even if you are CPU bound, you can just turn up the MSAA, you can turn on down sampling, you can just do whatever you want and you, you know that you've got that flexibility. So I personally would always rather have a slightly weaker CPU and a much better GPU. Uh, in this instance, if you do have something like a 4770K or 4790K, something along those lines, overclocking definitely does make the difference and you don't need to do that much. Um, unfortunately, RAM prices are really high at the moment, so more expensive, uh, faster DDR3 memory. If you are on a budget, it might not be worth it to you, because after all, if you're going to plonk that cash down, you can make a good argument. You'll be better off to buy, let's say, a used 6700K or perhaps a 7700K or whatever is available in your region used. But even so, even if you have slower memory, I mean, this memory is 1600 megahertz stock and I just cranked up a little bit more voltage through it, and well, you saw the results at 2200 megahertz, and it does make a tangible difference because obviously memory bandwidth goes up through the roof. You might need to uh, loosen your uh, latency settings a little bit, but even so, in my opinion, it generally makes more sense to just have that throughput there with all of that said, hopefully you have found this video a little bit fun, a little bit useful. If you have the normal stuff, well, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.